expected Q1 FY25 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listening only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pratik Jaktav from ENY Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Steve. Good evening to all the participants in the call today. Welcome to the Q1 FY25 earnings call of Datamatics Global Services Limited. The results and presentation have been already made to you and it is also available on the website of Datamatics. In case anyone has not received a copy of this release and presentation, please do write us and we will be happy to send you all. To take us through the results today and to answer your questions, we have with us the top management of company represented by Rahul Kanodia, Vice Chairman and CEO, Sandeep Mandri, EVP and Chief Financial Officer, and Mithul Mehta, EVP and Chief Marketing Officer. Rahul will start the call with brief overview of the quarter on business, which will be then followed by Sandeep talking on financial, and then we will open the floor for Q&A session. I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call, which gives any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statements must be viewed in conjunction with the risks and uncertainties that we face. These risks and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with KB and subsequent annual reports, which you can find on our website. With that said, I now hand over the call to Rahul, sir. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Pratik, and a very warm welcome, and thank you, everyone, for joining our earnings call for quarter one of 525 today. I will briefly discuss some of the key quarterly highlights, while Sandeep will provide an update on the financials. After that, we will open the floor for Q&A sessions. Our total revenue for quarter one stood at uh, rupees 394 crores and an EBIT of 42.6 crores, including revenue from Dextara. Our revenue grew 0.7% in quarter one. Dextara contributed to 3.1%, hence our organic growth was uh, negative 2.4% on a year-on-year -year basis. The degrowth was mainly due to the slowness in the US and European market and a flat growth in our existing business. Consequently, our EBIT margins reduced to 10.8%, which included Increments that we gave out for the year 24-25 rolled out in quarter one, and our ongoing investments in building AI solutions. A sequential quarter basis, we see uh, an improvement in EBIT for digital experiences, which grew from 11.8% in quarter four to 14.2% in quarter one. An improvement in EBIT for digital technologies, which from 0.7% in quarter four to 4.6% in quarter one. However, there was a shrinkage in EBIT for digital operation from 23.5% in quarter four to 15.5% in quarter one. This is not very comparable on a sequential basis due to the cyclical nature of this business. Although our financial performance has been somewhat softer than expected, our confidence in the overall business strategy is steadfast. We remain fully committed to this part. Our business continues to progress according to plan. Datamax is expanding its delivery centers in Philippines. We recently opened a delivery center in Dumagute, and we are opening another delivery center in Cebu in quarter two. In our product business, we integrated generative AI technologies in TrueBot, TrueCamp, and TrueBI, and have rolled these uh, features out to all existing customers. Furthermore, these products were listed on the Microsoft Marketplace in quarter three, and we have sold over $1 million of licenses on this platform. Regarding our recent acquisition of Dextara, a summit-level partner for implementing Salesforce, I would like to inform you that the integration is progressing well, and the teams are collaborating actively on new opportunities. We have submitted 10 new proposals in quarter one. This quarter, we expanded our client portfolio by adding new nine new customers, including a Fortune 500 company. Transport and logistics is a focus vertical for data matrix across all our lines of businesses. Mm -hmm. We have 15 plus customers in this segment, 
In quarter one, we added another U.S. logistics customer to this list. We have aligned our organization structures and processes for, for higher growth going forward. As I mentioned in the last poll, we are excited about the opportunities that artificial intelligence presents. Recently, we became one of the first digital technology companies worldwide to receive an ISO 42001-2023 certification for AI management systems. This achievement will help our customers manage the risks and opportunities associated with AI, balancing innovation with governance. We have recently received a patent for AI in TrueCap. This further solidifies its position as a leading intelligent document processing solution. Microsoft, along with OpenAI, is, a lead, is leading the charter in the AI in the enterprise today. Along with Microsoft, we are co-creating and reimagining applications using the power of AI. One notable development is a partner onboarding co-pilot developed by Datamatics, which is among the top three co-pilots featured at Microsoft Build Annual Developer Conference in Seattle, Washington. Additionally, Microsoft recognized Datamatics as an AI first mover in the recent publication highlighting the recognition of our AI solutions are receiving from the industry. I'm excited to announce a groundbreaking AI initiative that our team has successfully secured a leading American supermarket chain. This project entails the implementation of advanced AI-driven video monitoring and analytics technology across 250 locations aimed at enhancing customers' experience while simultaneously migrating instances of fraud, mitigating instances of fraud. To date, Datamatics has delivered over 40 AI projects across various verticals. Looking ahead, we are positive about regaining our momentum with anticipated improvements in both revenue and growth, revenue growth and profit margins. Regarding our EBIT margins through diligent cost management and operational efficiencies, we project an EBIT improvement of 150 to 200 basis points in quarter two. Before handing, handing over the call to our CFO, Sandeep Mantri, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Sandeep Mantri on his last earnings calls with us. His dedication, leadership, and financial acumen have been instrumental in guiding our company in achieving significant milestones. Sandeep, your contributions have laid a solid foundation for our future success, and we are deeply grateful for your commitment and hard work. On behalf of the entire Data Manage team, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors and look forward to your continued success. Thank you for everything. Sandeep, over to you. Thank you, Rahul, for the kind words. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us in quarter one FY25 earning call. Let me start with the financial performance for the Q1 of FY25. Our revenue for this quarter is stood at uh, 394 crores, which is a drop of 4.5% uh, on a sequential basis and a marginal uh, of 0.7% on a YOI basis. Our EBITDA for this quarter was at 13% compared to 17.3% in Q1 of last year, so there is a significant drop in EBITDA. Our EBIT for this quarter was at 108 compared to 15% in Q1 of last year. As explained by, the, by Rahul, the reason for drop in operational profit is primarily due to uh, slow revenue growth, increment for 24-25 effected in Q1, and our continued investment in uh, AI project. Our tax rate for the quarter is 17.2% compared to 18.7% in Q1 of last year. Our EPS for the quarter was rupees 7.37 per share uh, compared to 8.9 uh, in Q4 and 9.35 in last year Q1. When we see segment-wise revenue performance, our digital operation revenue was at rupees 164.8 crores, which is a drop of 1.3% on YUI basis. Digital operation EBIT margin was at 15.5%. Total contribution uh, in revenue was 42%. Our digital experience revenue was at 67.9 crore, which is a growth of 2.4% on YUI basis. Its EBIT margin was at 14.2%, and its contribution to total revenue was 17%. Our digital technologies revenue was at 161.3 crore, which is a growth of 2.2% on YUI basis. EBIT margin for digital technology stood at 4.6% and the contribution 
of digital technology to total revenue was 41 percent. We continue to maintain a healthy balance sheet. As on June 30, 2024, our total cash and investment stood at rupees 589 crore, and our DSO for uh, as at the end of this quarter was at 61 days. In terms of geographical footprint, US remains our largest geography with 54% of our business coming from US, followed by UK and Europe at 13%, and the rest of the world, including India, is at 33%. In terms of industry footprint, technology and consulting remains the largest segment for us, which constitute 27% of our revenue, followed by BFSI, which stood at 25%, then education and publishing, and manufacturing, infra and logistic, each at 12%, then non-profit or non-government organization at 10%, retail at 9% of our business, other rest miscellaneous is 5% of our total revenue. Our client concentration remains very healthy with top 5, 10 and 20 clients contributing to 23%, 37% and 50% respectively. As this is my last running call with Datamatic, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude it has been an honor to serve you as your CFO and to work alongside such a talented and dedicated team. I want to thank our employees for their unwavering commitment, our investors for their trust and support, and the entire leadership team for their collaboration and guidance. Together, we have achieved many significant milestones. I am confident that Datamatic is well positioned for continued success, and I look forward to seeing the companies future accomplishment. Special thanks to Rahul uh, for always believing me, believing in me and trusting me. And thank you all for the incredible journey. With this, I will now pass on the call to operators to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Krishma Shah from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening to the management team and uh, uh, you know, just wanted to understand the softness and growth a little better. Uh, I mean, where, I mean, uh, as evident, we could see some pain in the top five and the top ten accounts. So if you could tell us how is the, how is the trajectory going to be for the rest of the year with uh, the key accounts and where is the growth going to come uh, from your own for and what's the guidance for the entire year? Sure. So some of, some of the so on the uh, digital operation side, there was some uh, delay in the shrinkage in the volume. Uh, we expect some of the volume to come back uh, in Q2 and Q3 of this year. Uh, on the on the technology side, certain projects got a little pushed out, and again we expect that to happen in Q3. So overall, from a growth point of view, in the last earnings call we talked about a four percent organic growth and another three and a half to four percent from a uh, inorganic, and we at this point maintain that uh, that uh, projection. So I think we should be in that range once we claw back some of the volumes and some of the different projects kick in. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so I get that. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, how has Dexara grown for this quarter year on year basis and what's the outlook for, uh, uh, you know, Dexara? Dexara is, is flat. Dexara this quarter has not grown. Uh, but that does not concern me because our strategy behind Dextara was, uh, and I, I, we had a call for Dextara specifically when we acquired them. So they, as a company, because they were much smaller, were bidding for smaller deals, uh, ranging between 50k to 100k. 
and the deal that Datamax was getting was ranging between half a million to up to three million dollars per deal. So our strategy behind that was with their competence and expertise, uh, we will convert a few of the larger deals that we are getting and that will give the upside in terms of growth. Now, in quarter one, it's very difficult to close a deal so fast. I mean, that's too short a period. Uh, so they they have been working very closely with our team, and as I mentioned, we've submitted 10 proposals in, in Q1 of this year. So I'm mm -hmm. actually very uh, positive about their ability to close a few one or two large deals, and that will get the growth rate going for Dextara. You paused the small deal growth that Dextara was, uh, uh, you know, traditionally uh, no, doing. We've not paused it. We've not paused it. But uh, yeah, quarter one is is a little soft. Uh, so they have been working on several deals. So, so we've not paused the small deals, but the the upstream will come when you find one or two large deals, and and we have that pipeline from Datamatics. Okay, and have we disclosed the total uh, pipeline this quarter? What does it stand at? Uh, no, our pipeline uh, last quarter was about 200 million. We've seen the softness, so that's come down to about 170-ish. Okay. And uh, how much of these increments that we've rolled out in quarter one will continue in quarter two and ongoing investments? You know, can you give me? Some margin outlook for the entire year. Yeah, the the increments that we gave on an average was roughly about nine nine and a half percent, and obviously when you give that increment, it stays through the whole year. Uh, it goes up and down a little bit depending on churn. Some people leave, some people, new people come, but roughly nine and a half percent will stay through the whole year. Uh, but all 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 the services companies, IT companies. Uh, go through those motions when then they tighten the belt, they churn some stuff, and then it sort of comes back to normal. Sure, sure. Yeah. And overall, I mean, if Q2 is going to see the margin recovery, do you see, uh, you know, that trend of recovery continuing to the subsequent quarters, uh, or what's the sense? Yeah, the subsequent quarter should see the trend continuing. The reason is that, uh, as I mentioned, some of the volume that came down in digital operations will kick in in quarter two and quarter three. Uh, and also some of the projects in the IT which got pushed out to quarter three. So they will kick in. And the moment you get the revenues coming in, the margins by default improve uh, because the cost structure does not move. Q4 for us always tends to spike a little bit. So Q4 will always be healthier than the uh, other three quarters. So quarter two, three, and four should be better than quarter one. Okay. And uh, there is an exceptional item of three crores in the p &L. Yeah, That is correct. Uh, so, so that is the amount we paid uh, toward uh, acquisition of Dektara to the okay. advisor who helped us in getting this deal. Okay. So that is the exceptional and not sitting in the operation cost. Ah, that is not operation. Yeah, there is a one-time uh, cost, yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Right. Um, uh, thank you and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from Kizuna Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So I just wanted to ask you the organic degrowth that we had. Can you quantify them uh, in terms of what was due to softness and demand? Incremental increments and investment in AI. Uh, we don't have that breakup now. So you think what is the uh, the impact of increments, the impact of AI, and the impact of uh, the softness, the breakup of that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, uh, I don't have that handy. Yes, no, it, it, increment will be having about you know nine nine and a half percent, which means which means about uh, four four and a half percent. Almost increment is one of the major reasons. And coupled with the sluggish revenue growth, both have actually uh, brought down the EBITDA a little bit. Then the revenue growth would have been on the ah, high. Then we would have, then we would have not reached the bottom line. Would have been much. Even if with six seven percent revenue growth, we would have uh, better in terms of EBITDA. Okay, sir. And sir, any earnouts triggered during this uh, next acquisition? Like there was a performance-based uh, payout that was going to be uh, triggered. 
So what will be kind of done? Lepan, uh, that will happen at the end of the year. Uh, first payment will be at the end of the year, and second payment will be after uh, in 31st March 26. So uh, this is a uh, two-year deal post uh, acquisition. Okay, sir. And in terms of pipeline of 170 million dollars, so sir, can you bifurcate them, uh, bifurcate them into the verticals like how much in the AFP, how much in the product size, and uh, in the which vertical like DFSI manufacturing? Uh, yeah, I don't have that break up right now. But we, we don't give uh, segment wise bifurcation of pipeline. In fact, we started giving pipeline last to last to quarter only. Yeah. So right now, we are not giving segment wise what is the pipeline because many of the uh, you know many of the places what is happening, some are combined deals. So it is very difficult to figure out you know which segment it uh, hybrid deals basically. We are looking more and uh, seeing more and more hybrid deals. Okay, sir. That's it for my thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ankur, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, Rahul and Sandeep. Uh, as an individual investor, when I see the presentation, I see that predominantly it seems here that the personal like, cost has increased in the first quarter in the region. So, uh, do I understand that this phenomena will happen every year and the quarter one will show the impact every year like this? And so second you, thing is, what is... Your very your voice is very unclear. Uh, is it more clear now? Uh, not really, it's a little louder, but not necessarily clearer, but maybe you can just continue and, and if we can understand, we can okay. do this. Okay, okay. So, my question is that uh, the personal cost phenomena is not a new phenomena. It will be there in every quarter. Correct, every yes. year it will be there. So, if, if we are targeting the revenue growth, what are the new verticals and markets we are scouting for? And the second question which I just want to understand is, the AI and technology is quite a uh, thing which is dependent upon R&D. And there has been huge inflow in different R&D organization across the world. So, how we are keeping pace to be ahead of all these technological advancements? So, these are the three questions I want to ask. So, so, to your first question, uh, yeah, it, that is not a new phenomena. Uh, however, uh, the growth particularly was sluggish, and 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 you know when you have growth, it absorbs the increase in cost very easily. Uh, unfortunately, because we didn't have the growth uh, in Q1 of this year, the cost absorption was not at the same level. Uh, I am confident that as we go through the quarters, the growth will come in, and we should be able to absorb the cost. Having said that, we've already tightened our belt. Uh, and uh, we are already seeing results uh, of that tightening of the belt in the first month of Q2, which is uh, July. Uh, to your point about uh, AI and how we are keeping abreast, uh, we are very plugged in with the R&D team that we have. We have a whole team under Data Labs that does a lot of R&D in the space. We are working very closely with Microsoft and with Google, uh, and we are actually building cutting-edge technology, basis which uh, Microsoft has covered us in their coffee table book as an early as an early adopter of AI. Also, they showcased Datamatics and their head office in Seattle, Washington, as one of three companies globally from an AI ISP point of view. Uh, we also got the uh, ISO certification for AI. So, so all of these things uh, that we are doing, and also I, I talked about a very interesting project around video analytics that we got, uh, which is a project that we signed up and we will roll it out across 250 locations. So this is all, I think, testimony to the kind of work we've done on AI. Uh, and the R&D team, I must say, has done some very cutting edge stuff. So we will start seeing the benefits of all of this that we've done in the coming quarters. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rahul, for this. And I extend my warm wishes to Sandeep also for his new MD where we have seen the company from like, I've been tracking it from last one, one and a half year, and yeah, it's been phenomena to see good leaders in the industry. Thank you, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one.
The next question is from the line of Nikhil from Kizuna Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I just wanted to ask you about uh, the AFC pipeline. Like, how are we approaching the AFC deals? Like, those are the large deals that we dealt out last time. So those, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's not on AFC. Uh, we have just kicked off line 2B. Uh, line 2B was delayed uh, for a variety of reasons with COVID and all of that type of stuff, but that we just kicked it off. We have currently a bid for uh, Pune Metro, and uh, we are awaiting the results of Pune Metro. I am confident that in, within the next one month, we will get the results for sure. So in Q2, we'll, we'll get some, some visibility to where we are on Pune Metro. Uh, we are looking at uh, some other lines that are coming in in Mumbai, uh, line 9, line 4, 5, and 6. So as we go through the motions, we will give an update on that as well. Uh, plus, in addition to that, we are pivoting a little bit more into the U.S. Uh, so our sales team has now started focusing uh, very actively on the U.S. market in this space. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. I see this, uh, mentioned about Mumbai line 9, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, when does uh, that come up? And in terms of the U.S. that you're pivoting into, uh, as, uh, is this the first time we will be uh, looking for contracts on this uh, end? Uh, so, no. In the U.S., we have done uh, Memphis uh, as a project. We have done a small project with San Diego. Uh, but now we've got a sales team in the U.S. that is uh, looking at many other opportunities in the U.S. So we've done U.S. projects before, and uh, I'm very confident we'll be able to deliver on those. Uh, as far as uh, line 9, 4, 5, and 6, the tenders have been floated. <coughs> we will now be working on those tenders, and we will probably submit some of them in the next two months, uh, and probably a quarter after that. So really you're talking about Q3, where we start seeing some results uh, to, you know, which ones materialize. Very soon. And this, uh, the profitability for this, uh, you know, in India versus the U.S., uh, how would it be different? Yeah, so that is a concern. India is a far more price-sensitive market, and profitability is lower. Uh, and that's the reason why we are focusing more in the U.S. Uh, we've also hired a global head of sales in the U.S. We're looking at the AFP business in the U.S. as well. So increasingly, we are uh, focusing more on the Western markets. Europe is right now a little sluggish because Europe is, uh, you know, because of the Ukraine war, the inflation and things like that. There is a problem in Europe, but the U.S. is still looking good. Uh, the current, there is some degree of uncertainty because of the elections coming up. Uh, we don't know which way it's going to go. But outside of that, the economy seems to be doing quite all right. Uh, there is slowness, which we see more in terms of decisions being deferred. And that's the softness that we've seen, and, and, and projects are getting pushed out. Uh, but on, on a little longer term, six months to a year, year and a half, I don't see too much of a trouble with the U.S. market. Okay. Is there lastly any other plans on the acquisition on, uh, on the board on acquisition side? So we are in dialogue with some companies. Uh, nothing that is at the serious level that I would like to announce right now. But uh, as those mature. Uh, we will certainly, you know, uh, go through the motions of having a board approval, informing SEBI and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, so we are in dialogue with some companies, but uh, nothing right now uh, that needs uh, to be announced. Right, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from Kizuna Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. According to my understanding, so our next margin levels are going to be the revenue growth and revenue growth only. Right, sir? Uh, sorry, say that again, please. So our next margin level that is going to go to the bottom line is going to be the revenue growth. Right, sir? 
Right. Not only revenue growth, we are tightening our belt also. So that also will give uh, some some sort of uh, market yeah. improvement. Some cost control and revenue growth. It's a combination. It's a combination. So, sir, if you want to guide, what will be the exit margin for uh, for 25? For for the full year? Yes, sir. We right now we are guiding only Q2 for margin, which will be about. Uh, 150 to 200 basis points. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so if, we, if we look at the current one, we are talking about 10.8 percent at an EBIT level. Uh, if we improve two basis points, 200 basis points, you're talking about 12.8. 12 12.8. So, so I think we will maintain uh, 12 to 13 range. Yeah. For the year. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Uh, thank you everyone for being on the call today. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you and I look forward to speaking to you again at the end of quarter uh, two. I'm sure we will have better results to talk about and uh, we should be back with a growth moment. Thank you once again for being on the call. Bye-bye. On behalf of Datamatics Global Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.